This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or simply making a donation. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, last Friday, uh, I put out a video uh, concerned with what is the best Telecaster style guitar for 300 quid or less. And it proved to be quite popular, so I thought I'd do it again. Um, this time, though, we're looking at what is the best Strat for 300 quid or less, or best Strat-style guitar for that kind of money. Um, once again, this isn't a review. I don't have the guitars here to play and compare and show them to you. Uh, this is more just a price comparison, feature comparison, a little bit of window shopping, if you like. And uh, also, um, you're going to be getting my thoughts uh, based on my, upon my experience of playing these guitars over recent times as they've passed through my hands. So, um, if, like me, you are fond of a bargain, you're careful with your money, is another polite way of saying it. Uh, and maybe you're not too bothered about um, what brand names you are seen to be sporting. I mean... Look at me. I'm hardly an ambassador for Jean-Paul Chanel or Dolce and Armani, am I really? So if that sounds a bit like you and you're on the lookout for a Strat, here's some useful information for you. Okay then, beginning with the cheapest in the lineup, the Squire Affinity Strat, which costs just a shade under £150. For that, you get an older body, maple neck, uh, you get, unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, the um, the big canoe paddle CBS era headstock. You either love it or you hate it. I'm in the latter camp, I'm afraid, but that's just a personal thing. Um, pickups are three single coils, which uh, use ceramic magnets in this case. And uh, the other thing worthy of note here is the nut with its 40.6 millimeters so if you feel the need to upgrade this guitar maybe use it as a modding platform then um, you may struggle to find uh, a high quality bone or graphite nut as narrow as that um, you know 42 maybe 43 millimeters is more of a standard nut width for a strat style guitar and this uh, 40.6 millimeter nut is a little bit narrow which means that it's uh, as i say you know not as readily available as an aftermarket part and for my uh, personal taste it also makes um, things feel a little bit cramped down at that end of the neck but if you've got tiny hands which i don't then you could possibly see that as a plus point so that is the squire affinity strat moving on to the next one we have the harley benton st 57 dg black tribute once again, an older body, uh, maple neck, 21 frets, just like the Squire, I forgot to mention there. But here you get uh, Alnico pickups, uh, Roswell Alnico pickups as well, and a more standard nut width of 42mm, and another nice touch at this uh, price point, which is just a shade over 150 quid, is that it is a Graftec Tusk nut. Um, as many of you know, I own this guitar and it's a, a good workhorse Strat style instrument, although I have done a few mods to it to just kind of upgrade it. Next up, we have um, a strong contender here, a bit more expensive, £286 buys you a vintage V6 reissued. But you do get a lot for your money. Uh, once again, an older body maple neck with uh, maple fretboard 22 frets this time a uh, little bit more modern spec there i do prefer a 22 fret neck um but the uh, the real surprise here well not surprise but the real uh, kind of uh, selling point i guess you'd call for this is the wilkinson hardware this is the only guitar in the lineup that has um locking tuners these are wilkinson's easy lock tuners which are to be honest, 
as good as any other locking tuners I've ever tried. They, they lock the strings in tune, albeit in a little bit uh, of an unconventional manner, but they do the job. Um, you also get Wilkinson uh, Alnico 5 pickups and um, a Wilkinson trem. Now, you can't see from this angle here, but the holes in the block at the back are staggered, which... Um, dig out an interview with uh, Trev Wilkinson on uh, YouTube somewhere and he explains why that leads to better tuning stability. Um, I don't know how it works. I do know that this is a very, very difficult trem to put out of tune. Uh, so yeah, uh, strong contender here, good workhorse Strat style guitar and it has a tortoise shell pick guard and you know how much I love a tortoise shell pick guard. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. This is um, a Yamaha Pacifica. Now, I included this because I thought um, it might be worthwhile including a Fat Strat style guitar in the lineup. And uh, let's just take a look at it. It is a really pretty looking guitar when it comes into focus. There we go. So, what have we got? Well, we get Yamaha's own pickups. Um, Details are a bit scant about these on the uh, listing here, but I'm absolutely positive that I remember reading a Yamaha press release as part of a review of this guitar, and Yamaha were quite proud of the fact that they'd upgraded the Pacificas uh, to having Alnico uh, 5 pickups, so that's a plus point there. You know, that lovely flame maple top, it's only a veneer, obviously, sits on top of an older body and you get a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard, 22 frets. And uh, you also get, um, if you're wanting a little bit more of a traditional Strat sound from the bridge pickup, you can also push pull it into single coil mode there. Uh, so that is the Yamaha Pacifica 212V FM TBS. A little bit more expensive than the uh, Wilkinson equipped vintage guitar, but still well within our budget of £300. And you are getting a lot of guitar for your money with that, I, I really do think. Moving on to our final guitar in the lineup, the most expensive one here, the Fender Squire Classic Vibe 70s Strat, which is over budget, uh, but I'm, I'm including it here because uh, when I did the Telecaster Roundup, people um, shouted at me for not including the this, this Squire Classic Vibes. I reckon uh, if you can afford £300 for a guitar, you can probably scrabble around down the back of the sofa cushions and find the extra change to uh, be able to buy one of these, or, you know, maybe you can haggle the price down, uh, whatever. Anyway, what do you get for your 311 quid? You get a poplar body, a maple neck with an Indian laurel fretboard, 21 narrow tall frets, which will please the vintage purists. And also, in a nod towards vintage spec, you get a slightly more cambered fretboard at nine and a half inches. Uh, decent quality Alnico pickups and uh, everything else that you would expect on a Strat, really. Uh, basically, oh yes, the uh, nice touch there. The, uh, the second tone control is uh, hooked up to the bridge pickup as well. I mean, that's a common enough mod and easy to do, but it's nice that somebody's taken the time to do it for you. Um, you get the, uh, the rather love it or hate it... Uh, CBS era headstock, which is entirely correct for a, a guitar that's aping a kind of 70s spec. And um, as much as I dislike that headstock shape, I do like the uh, the tortoise shell pick guard, as I've mentioned. So there you go. Oh, a bone nut. That's a nice touch at this kind of price point. That is the Squire Classic Vibe 70s Strat. If you're after a a vintage-ish feeling and looking strap, then this may be just the choice for you, although it is the most expensive on the list. And the more observant amongst you will have noticed that I screwed up there. I said that the uh, Yamaha was the more expensive guitar compared to the vintage, when in fact it's the other way around. But never mind, these things happen. Um, anyway, now we come to the thorny question of which guitar would I buy if it were my money? And in a sense, I've already answered that question because I bought the uh, Harley Benton ST57. And I'm very happy with it. 
Uh, but the reason I bought it, and I don't want to kind of uh, knock this guitar because it is a great guitar. The reason I bought it was because I needed a Strat style guitar for a project I was planning. And it was here, you know, it was convenient. It was one of the guitars that I was reviewing for the uh, charity fundraising thing I was doing. So I just bought it off the charity and, um, you know, it, it fulfilled its purpose. That said, a Strat really isn't my main squeeze these days. It's not the, my go-to guitar. As you know, I'm kind of uh, absolutely head over heels in love with me Gordon Smith. So it, it, as a secondary guitar, it was kind of, well, this fulfills the needs that I have for a Strat-style guitar. It's here, it's convenient, it's cheap, I'll buy it. But if I was um, shopping for a Strat-type guitar and I had £300 to spend and... Uh, I was looking for it as my main guitar, then without a shadow of a doubt, it would be the Yamaha Pacifica that would uh, that I would opt for. It has everything I like in a Strat. Um, uh, my formative years as a guitarist were the 1980s, so I do like a humbucket in the bridge, HSS Strat, that's uh, very much my cup of tea. Uh, it's got 22 frets, it looks pretty, and yeah it's a yamaha pacifica and i've played a few of those and owned a couple over the years and always found them to be incredibly well built and well put together and you know just great guitars in general that punch well above their weight so that's the guitar i would have out of this bunch here and i know i'm going to get into trouble for saying this and for pointing this out but when you look at a, a comparable guitar from fender uh you'd be looking at this um, fat strap player series guitar that's you know it's got the humbucker and two single coils it's got the, t the 22 fret neck it's got the nice flame maple top and look at the price of it and then look again at the price of the Yamaha now just doing a, a rough mental calculation that's about a 350 quid difference and I'm not entirely sure where that 350 quid has gone in terms of what you'd be getting for your money. No, the guitars are not identical, but I would argue that they are in the same kind of ballpark when it comes to um, features and specification. And that 350 quid, you can buy a lot of beer and curry with that. So I suspect that's where <laughs> that money would go in, uh, in the case of me. So... As I say, I know I'm going to get into trouble for, for doing that comparison. People are going to shout at me, but I've got a thick skin. <laughs> it's not going to co look, cause me any lost sleep. So there you go. That is um, my conclusion when uh, it comes to the best Strat style guitars for 300 quid or less. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. I hope you found this informative and useful, and if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and why not give me a like while you're at it. And I mentioned the charity fundraising thing earlier. Um, I'll just point out once again that I have a, a fundraising charity single out at the moment. It's uh, an instrumental version of the old Wizard hit, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day. Uh, all pro proceeds will go to Zoe's Place Baby Hospice, a charity in Middlesbrough, which provides palliative, respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal diseases. So... Please give generously, please buy a copy of the single, or if you don't want to do that, just take a listen to it on Spotify. That still generates revenue that goes to the charity and is much appreciated. And um, I'll just round off now by reminding you that I have gift vouchers available. Uh, if you're looking for hints to drop for your nearest and dearest, and if you want some guitar lessons, why not um, get yourself a gift voucher for Christmas or get somebody else to get you a gift voucher for Christmas? Or if you prefer something, um, you know, a little bit more permanent, then you can uh, get yourself one of my Udemy courses. Uh, there's a course for raw beginners on how to play the guitar who've never picked up a guitar before. There's an entry-level lead guitar course. There's a little bit more of an advanced lead guitar course. There's a course on modes. There's a course on slide guitar. There's a course on blues. And coming soon, there will be a course analysing the style of uh, David Gilmore. That's the one I'm working on at the moment. Uh, so, you know, check them out. Check out the reviews that these courses are getting on Udemy and you will see that people are saying all kinds of nice things about them. And um, 
You can also preview all of the courses for free before you spend so much as a brass farthing on signing up for one. So just check it out, see if it's for you. And if it is, why not enrol? You won't regret it, I promise you. And with that, I'll uh, bid you all a good day and say thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and thank you for your time. And I do look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks. And don't forget, before you go, to check out my Udemy courses, which you can see are available via my website, which is also where you can contact me to get in touch for some one-to-one -one tuition, either via Skype or in person if you live local to me. I also have merchandise available on my Teespring store, and of course, all of the links are in the description. See you next time, chaps. <laughs>